Uh, hi, Jason. I just wanted to give you a quick um, idea on how to arm a channel and route channels to a master fader so you could record things. So um, you can ignore this first fader right, he right here. It's just um, my microphone with Rust Free on it to try to eliminate the noise that my microphone makes and, and my windows are open in my house. So um, I just stuck hammerhead, so you could just ignore the first channel. The second fader is just hammerhead. I, wa I wanted to have a sound source, something I could record. So um, at the bottom of the second fader, um, I added, I, I pressed the little R button. When you press it, it says record, and that just means it's ready to be recorded. People will call that arming a channel. So we've armed this fader to be ready to be recorded. Up at the top, um, where the the BPM that will wind the play is, the fourth, third icon, I guess, would be the record icon. If you press it, it's going to record, and it's going to record in chunks. So usually the default is a one bar chunk. If you want to change how big those chunks are, you can click on the 120, the BPM, then click on the dot, 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 and down here where it says sync quantum, it's set for four bars. So if I hit pl uh, record, it will r record four bars. And if it goes past four bars, it will record an additional four bars. So if I was to hit record, and then on the fifth bar hit stop, it's not going to stop on the fifth bar. It's going to stop on the eighth bar. And it will just keep recording four bar chunks. Most of the time, I think the default is set for one bar. So if you hit it stop on the fifth bar, it will actually won't stop at the fifth bar, it will continue until the sixth bar. And underneath the um, transport controls, there's a line, I think it's yellow, and when we, right now it's white, but when, it, when we record it, it'll turn yellow, and when it gets to the end, it um, loops back to the beginning, so it visibly shows you those bar chunks, okay? So I'll go to four bars, we'll see four bar chunks. So, so right now, if I hit record, it's going yellow, but the, the record button is blinking. Oh wait, it stopped blinking. It, and when it stopped blinking, it lets us know that it is now recording. And it hit the end of the chunk, so now if I hit stop, it's gonna keep blinking until it reaches the end of the, and this will be the eighth bar. So if I actually wanted to do four bars, I have to hit stop, start, and then stop almost immediately before it reaches the end. So I hit start, it isn't going to begin until it reaches the beginning of the fourth bar. And now if I hit stop, it will keep blinking until it reaches the end of that fourth bar. So that right there was a four bar chunk. So that's really, really, really convenient because um, this will allow you when you're working in projects to just record loops and save them to your to your um, device and then later you can grab those loops and use them however you want. So uh, I do know people who collect, um, they'll do this process of just recording out loops for all of their songs just kind of randomly like oh that's a really cool loop I might use that again and they'll just do that they'll just record it and save it for later. Um, so right now I recorded Hammerhead because it's armed and when I hit record it recorded Hammerhead but you can actually record lots of things according to how many how much power your device has. So if I had like 10, 20 um, faders, I would just press the, the little circle R at the bottom of the fader, and when I hit record, it will record all the ones that are armed. So right now I could record my microphone and do the same thing. Hit record, hit stop, and I'll actually, it'll record two tracks at the same exact time, okay? Now, what if I had like lots of instruments? Um, just pick something else and what if we don't want to record each instrument separately right we actually want to sum all of the audio together and record like the master fader like if this was a mixer we would want to record just the mix of all of these right because we change the volumes on every single thing to get it to sound perfect and it sounds good in our headphones because everything's going out to our headphones. Right now, you can see at the bottom, everything's everything's going out to the headphones. So 
how would we get that to go to get recorded as one track? And the way you would do that is you would just route everything. So, um, so the way you can route things in um, AUM is uh, if we were to like eject the headphone by dragging it and eject it, we could click the plus and we could say route it to a mix bus. So at the bottom it says mix bus. I'm just going to choose A, but you can see you're, you can do up to P number of buses. Um, I choose A, and so instead of the audio going straight out to a headphone, like Hammerhead is doing, my microphone is now going out to A. But there is no A bus. We didn't make an A bus yet, so we actually have to go to the right where the plus sign is, create a new fader, say it's uh, audio, and at the top where the plus is, we choose mix bus A. So now we've just routed the audio from that microphone to A. If you just go down, then it goes looking for a fader that's named A, and we have one named A. So now that microphone is going to the A bus and then back out to the headphones. So we still hear it. So we can do the same thing with Hammerhead. So I think I, I dragged it to the right and I ejected it, but you actually can long press the, he the headphones and say replace, and then say mix bus A. So I'm just gonna do that for all of these. Mix bus A, mix, mix bus, replace with mix bus A. Now, every single thing in this project all routes to mix bus A. And if I was to arm that track, now when I hit record, we'll get all of the sound in one track. And so that's it. So you just wanted to explain that. Um, if we're on the topic of routing, um, I will just point out that um, sometimes uh, you won't use this as a master bus. Sometimes you can do, use this as like an effects bus and you could add all of your, your effects um, here. So like maybe I want to EQ them all and I want to um, degrade all of the sound, right, of that channel. So if I wanted to use this as an effects bus, I could say make hammerhead send to the bus A. Send to bus A. And so hammerhead's audio, it's not a lot of audio, it's just a little bit of audio right now, would get sent, uh, sorry, I'm saying that wrong, it's getting sent here, so this is the amount of audio that's getting sent. So this is very little audio. This is a lot of audio that is being sent across to this bus, okay? And then out to my headphone. So anything that you send to bus A is going to get this and this audio. And so since this, and then we can do that for, for all of them. So if we wanted those effects on ham, Hammerhead, we already did it maybe we would just send a little bit of audio to it. And so some of the audio would make it out to, um, well, this, this actually doesn't make a lot of sense because it goes to A twice. So maybe we would want to have a new master bus. So maybe we would make master bus B. So we'll make all of these master bus B. And then we can make a new bus and we'll call that master bus B. And now this is our master bus, so we wanna arm that one. So this is just an interesting idea. A lot of DAWs have effects buses, and so that's how you would do that. You use this send, so you can send in the middle of a, and it's still, you can still have it go out to the master bus if you wanted, and then you can make this one go out to your master bus also if you wanted. So. That's kind of the, that's generally how you route things. You either use a bus send or you use a mix send out to a mix bus. Okay. That's it for this lesson. I think that was a lot. I mean, the, the loop quantum actually is very cool. Um, you can see they got saved into this folder and... four-bar loop, per, a perfect four-bar loop that you could then use in like Koala and other applications and stuff like that. Um, and you don't have to do any trimming because AUM does the perfect trimming for you. And, and I, a lot of people don't know about Sim Quantum. It's probably one of the best 
81 features, but you kind of have to have a need for it, but if you need it, it's pretty freaking amazing. All right, that's it.